Okay, hey guys, it's Jackie from Watercolor Gypsy Art and Wellness, and it is time to move on to the hard pastels of the pastel um, intensive informational workshop. Sorry, I'm just making sure my camera doesn't fall. It is um, with the microphone on it. It is a little heavier than my last one, so it tends to fall forward sometimes. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to use the same paper as I used for the medium pastels because we have so much of it left um, that I don't see a reason to um, to just get more paper. I end up using the papers anyway with all the marks on them and making something. So the hard pastel category is is very small. It's um, one, two, three, four. It's about five uh, pastels. So hard pastels, they come in sticks like this. Now this is a Prismacolor New Pastel. Let's see if I can zoom you in. And this is it without the wrapper on. When you get them in certain scents, and this is how they are labeled. Um, and to me, their numbering system makes absolutely no sense. Um, let me show you something really quick. So I have all of my pastels, and we're going to go over this in a separate video um, if I haven't released it already. Is This is how I keep all of my pastels. Um, I keep them in this uh, Profolio binder. Where is my... And you can see there's a lot of swatching I need to do still. Unison's new pastel. So this was the set. This is how it was numbered out in order, like 203, 204, 205, 206. Um, and I, I just posted somewhere about it in my pastel group um, on Monet Cafe, which is Susan Jenkins channel. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out. And I was like, why does this make no sense? And she pointed out to me that it makes more sense if you look on the num the last number. So the last number on this one is eight, so it's 248. So 248 would be somewhere around here. And if I look at like seven, eight, nine, like I get it, like eight, eight, this is green, 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 eight, this is a dark green, eight, this is green, you know, um, so to me, it made a little bit more sense, but they're numbering like eight, this is green, this is also green. So all the eights are, are greenish in color. But the uh, chart that Dakota Pastel sent me, sent me in order of like 203, 204, 205, 206, like you would think it would be organized. So that's just something I wanted to point out to you. When you do get them in sets, they are organized by color family. Um, this is the set of 96. It's pretty new um, and it is organized by color family despite the numbering system being a little weird. Now the reason why I took one out of the set of, sorry I have some broken pieces here. Um, the reason why I took this out of the set is because I wanted to show you the full pastel um, without the paper on it and I wanted to, if you, if you take a look at these, um, I have sharpened them with a blade and sandpaper. Um, and that's something about hard pastels that you can do. It, you do get some dust, you do get some breakage, but we're gonna get to that in a moment. Um, it's something that uh, the artist Ellen Eagle does. And I, I do work with my hard pastels that way as well. So you can kind of also use this one broke because the Prismacolor new pastels tend to be a little bit um, fragile. They're, they're the softest of the hard pastels that I have. And you get like a pencil line and you can also use it on its side and get like this kind of, you know, triangular stroke. So that's something about hard pastels that you can do. Um, so I sharpened some up. I sharpened all of them up actually. So I could show you that, that ability that they have. Okay. Now, the first one on my list is Karen Dosh. Let me find my Karen Dosh. This is my Karen Dosh. I have sharpened it on one end. There we go. So I have sharpened it on one end. It does say Karen Dosh here. 
Um, it says Pastel Cube by Karen Dosh, 7800-811. So let's, um, let me break, I'm going to break this because it's too big to work with. And I'm going to make some marks like we would. And you can see already that it's totally different from the softer or medium pastels. Like this is, this is just different. This is made for detail. Like look at those lines I'm getting. This doesn't distribute, you can barely see this on the white paper. You can probably barely see it on the, I wish I had another color to show you. Um, but it, it's hard. It doesn't come off as easily. Even on the sanded paper, it doesn't come off as easily. So they're great for underpaintings, and that's why uh, when I advise beginners to get started and they're really confused is to, um, for financial reasons and for painting reasons, I tell people, make sure you get at least a 12 set of new pastels, preferably the 24, because they're, they're really great for blocking in and doing an underpainting, and you can take your little, um, Oh, that was dirty. Um, your little pipe foam insulation that's not dirty and doesn't dirty your colors. Uh, let's see if we can see the color over this. You see how it it's very textured. It doesn't it doesn't distribute much and this is holding up. Now I want to show you the point because it can also be used as a pencil and this can save you money in the long run if you sharpen them correctly. The way you have to sharpen them is you have to use a fresh blade, you have to go across the holes, it's pastel, and then you take a piece of sandpaper, just just regular pencil sharpening sandpaper, and you rub in a, in a circular like, while you're moving your pastel in circular motion. It really it took me like five minutes to do them all. So you can use them like this or you could use them as blocking in shapes and do an alcohol wash you could do water wash like they're, they're great they're um necessary in every pastelist um arsenal it, it's a necessary thing to have hard pastels now let me read you about the company so karen dosh switzerland karen dosh is a very reputable company by the way there are 84 colors they are square karen dosh has expanded its offerings of premium color products by developing a dry pastel line to match its new pastel pencils this superior pastel cube has a particularly velvety feel for a hard pastel and is useful on both its side for broad areas and its corners for delicate line work. The 84 colors are highly light fast, pure of shade, water soluble, and utilize ultra fine pigments. The color selection is particularly unique for a hard pastel with a more thoughtful selection of muted tones, mixed tones, range of browns and flesh tones. Exceptional quality made to the highest Swiss made standards only sold as individuals at $3.50 for a single pastel. No sets available. Right there. That's a con for me. I don't want to be going through um, the entire range to look for a color based on the color I see on the computer because, as we know, you can't see the color. So as they feel great and to me um they're not that velvety like they're not they feel hard they they feel rough to me like they don't um feel like a new pastel which does feel velvety to me so you know I'm not saying they're lying about their claims but I think to me compared to what's on the market Mm, it wouldn't be my go-to. Now, if I was doing a drawing, if I was doing a realistic drawing or a portrait, I would go to this. And this sharpening thing I do that I learned from Ellen Eagle, look at that. Look how fine of a line I can get. Look, I can get eyelashes. 
like I would get these for that. So that's my thoughts on Karen Dosh. Now let's move up. And the fact that they don't have sets is, is just automatically like to me, it, it's a turn off. Now, unfortunately my create a color broke in transit, but I did manage to get this little piece sharpened <laughs> to show you guys. Um, create a color. We know it's from Australia. We went through this uh, quite a few times already. They're uh, made in Australia. They're, they're 72 two colors. They are square, obviously, as you can see, most hard pastels are square. Uh, an Australian made hard pastel sick and matching color range of the pastel pencils recognized by artists for their brilliance, high pigmentation, and an extraordinary light fastness. Create a color, Kari, is similar in size and consistency to new pastel and work great for underpaintings and hard edge work. A single pastel will cost you a dollar and forty cents. Sets of twelve, twenty-four and full set of 72. Now the set of 12 is 15, set of 24 is 36, and the set of 72 is $85. They are on sale right now at Dakota Pastels for $72 for the full set and $31 for the set of 24. I did not see a sale on the set of 12. So let's test, test these babies out. Make sure I'm in the room. Okay, so their claim to be similar to New Pastels is correct. I would compare this to New Pastel. Now, do you see how much more pigment we got down versus the Karen Dosh, which I really, really had to, like, this is the same pressure as this. So they, they do feel more pigmented. They feel a little more velvety. They feel a little smoother in their application. And look, I, I can, I would love to work with these in underpaintings and landscapes. And look at how the sanded paper really eats them up versus with the creative color, we had a kind of, I'm sorry, with the Karen Dosh, we kind of had a, had a hard time getting that. Like, look at that. I can, I'm trying to fill the tooth of the paper. And it is, it is soft. It does remind me of a, of a new pastel in many, many ways. Um, now, will I switch from new pastel to creative colors? Probably not, but it's uh now I know that they're they're there and they're they're good. Now let's I'm just showing you lines here how they can be used for linear work. Linear work is just as important as um big blocks and big strokes of color. Now I'm just gonna show you the point because I feel like this is such a good tool. This is such a, good, a cool thing that you can do with hard pastels is that you can sharpen them to a point. And yeah, you, you, you lose a little of your pastels, but um, it's, it's worth it. It's not, you don't lose that much. And it doesn't wear down that fast. Like look at how many lines I'm getting. So that's the, uh, that's the creative color. I, I enjoyed that. I liked that. Okay, now let's move on to the fab, uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos Pastels. Now, they do have a line of Polychromos pencils that is really great. Um, I don't know why they would call their pastels polychromos uh, and their pencils, but like their regular pencils. Their pastel pencils are called pit pastel pencils. So to me, it's a little confusing why they chose polychromos for their um, pastel, their hard pastels and their regular colored pencils and not for their pastel pencils and their hard pastel. So that's just my, my um, jibber jabber on that. So, uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos Pastels, they're, yeah, I just, I just said that about the pit pencils being their 
pastel pencils. Um, they're made in Germany. There are 60 in their set. This is the semi-hard pastel that has 60 extremely light, fast, and vivid colors. They have great intensity in a broad, spectr uh, a broad color spectrum, including a nice range of darks. While both smooth and soft enough for easy coverage, polychromos are hard enough to do fine line work. I do not see them for individual sale, only in sets. Uh, sets of 12, 24, 36, ranging from $29 to $85, and the full set of 60 will run you $130. So, let's move up. I did um, sharpen this as well, so I'm going to break this now that you have seen the whole thing and when I was sharpening it something weird happened it was just like felt like it was fighting me what well, I did it backwards this time guys I saw I started on the sanded paper so yeah they feel nice they do feel different than the new pastels um don't move as well but they um can make nice lines. They feel like they have something that's making them a little bit more robust. Now this is on the smooth side. I'm trying to see if I um, get a good coverage there and then we're gonna make some lines. These are good, this is a nice hard pastel. I like these hard pastels. Uh, they feel they feel velvety, yes, in a way. Um, but they do feel a little harder. Not as hard as the Karen Dosh. Somewhere in between the new pastel and the um, the Karen Dosh. So they're, they are a little more robust. They they work amazing as a hard pastel. A hard pastel is a hard pastel, guys. It's not like soft pastels. It, it, there's not like that much of a comparison, except for that um, Karen Dosh one, which was really um, odd. Now this is the point. Just drew a little tree shape there with that point. So I love sharpening them to a point. I, I don't know, that was like one of the best things I ever learned from like Ellen Eagle. I, I, I've learned so many things just from reading her books and watching her on, on New Masters Academy, but uh, that was one of my favorite things. So let me do it this way now because let me see if I can fit this. Yeah, because we're getting a little full on our paper. All right, so Faber-Castell, thumbs up. Love it, like it, would buy it. Okay, now let's get to, let's get to the big boys. Prismacolor New Pastels. Prismacolor New Pastels have been a favorite of pastel artists, majority of pastel artists use Prismacolor New Pastel. And this is it without the paper on. Sometimes they come with paper and this is it um, with the paper and the sharpened edge. Now, I hate the paper. Like taking this paper off is a struggle for sure. Um, we'll find out if my set of 12 when it arrives when we do the unboxing in the tutorial. If, oh, there's like some glue or something on here. It's just, so annoying to take off so the, the, the when you buy them individually they used to not have paper and then some point they decided to add paper and I'm like Pfft. like why Prismacolor and it does cause them to break and crack when you take the paper off so you, I don't know if you can see this but there is glue I can feel the glue you see that like that's 
that's the only con. Now, because of this, would I stop using them? Absolutely not. I buy them in sets. But look at what happened to my new pastel because I took the paper off. It just fell into pieces. So, they are made in Mexico. There is 96 colors in their range. A favorite by majority of pastel artists. I have yet to follow or find a pastel artist that doesn't have new pastels in their arsenal. They are for sure the most popular hard pastel on the market. This semi-hard pastel works well for underpainting, sketching, and for detail work where a line or hard edge is necessary. An individual pastel will only cost you a dollar and six a dollar sixty. Sets of 12, 24, 36, and 48 ranging from $19 to $70. A full set of 96 is 130 at Dakota Pastels, but I think I got mine at Blick for about $90, and sometimes they show up on Amazon even more affordably. They do come wrapped in paper when you buy them individually, but not in the sets. They have color numbering system that makes absolutely no sense, which we went over, but they also have names for their colors. They have fantastic quality at an affordable price. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not gonna break my big stick. I just wanted to show you um, that was, that this is the size they are and that they're, they're absolutely lovely. So they are softer um, than most hard pesto. So let's start with just a chunk. So I'm not pressing hard at all. And this is the Canson and look at how it's, it's, coming off and let me make some lines like this just feels like a soft pastel wood but it's acting like a hard pastel I hope that makes sense it's absolutely oh I just love new pastels so if you ask me which pastel bought to buy especially for the price Go for new pastels for sure. Now, are any of the other ones like bad? No, I like the fab. I like the fabric pastel, and I really like the Creative Color. Honestly, Creative Color would be second. Fabric pastel would be third, and Karen Dosh would be last. Only because I didn't like that hardness. So they blend beautifully. They're perfect for underpaintings. I've used them for underpaintings for years now. I I just. Look at how they come off on the sanded paper without me even like touching. Let me and let look at how they blend. Like oh, I, I'm biased. I know I should I shouldn't be biased while I'm doing these reviews, but I am a pastel artist. So like guys, like I, I gotta tell you what I actually think. And I can make fantastic line work with them. They are good for sky holes. I really, I'm going to do the, the little pointed side now. <laughs> Look at that fine line. So even though they're soft and they feel soft, they can make beautiful fine lines, whether, whether you sharpen them or not. So let's go here now. I don't, this is such a fine line. I don't even know if you can see it. Now, this is just the pastel itself. It doesn't even need to be sharpened. Uh, Ellen Eagle does a lot of work. Um, she does a lot of portrait work where she works kind of like, like this. So she sharpens because she likes the shape. So, like you see that fine line? I can get such detail, like that, that little highlight in the eyes. Or fur, like where the fur is up close on an animal. Or maybe if there's a, a detail in a leaf, in a landscape, or grasses. These I always use my new pastels in the beginning of my painting and at the end of my painting. So I, I love new pastels. Um, I think they are, for the value and for their quality, I think they are the best past, uh, hard pastels that you could go for. So, um, you know, and I'm, I'm going to repeat that. 
when I go um, and do the next video when I'm done with this huge series uh, of how to get started in pastels uh, with high quality pastels at a affordable range of less than a hundred dollars so all right that's that's pretty much all for the um actual hard pastels i do have one more thing to mention to you before uh you go and it's not technically a hard pastel but it is something that um is valuable to know about and it is something that is good for drawing it's good it comes in colors it comes in like a set that has like these colors and that sanguine color that people like to sketch in. They're perfect for sketching, they're perfect for drawing, they're perfect for preliminary work. Um, and they, they may, I haven't used them in my pastel paintings, I'm gonna be completely honest, but I use them in other, in other things. So these are Conte crayons. Um, they have wax in them. They are made in France. There are 48 of them, invented in France in 1795 by Nicolas Jacques. Jacques is I I I don't speak French, so I don't know if that's proper. Conte, especially for drawing and sketching, Conte crayons are made from a blend of natural pigments, kaolin clay, and graphite. The Conte crayon has been used by many of the world's greatest artists, including Picasso, Delacroix and Degas. The rich vivid colors of Conte crayon mixed together nicely and a range of effects can be consistently produced. They are well suited for use on newsprint, bristol, tone paper, or heavy grain surfaces. Their rich opacity makes them ideal for work on darker papers and their quality ensures the longevity of your drawings. Conte crayons are waxier and much firmer than soft pastels so they produce a little dust and are easy to control. So they produce little dust and are easy to control. Sharpen Conte crayons to a chisel tip with the sanded pad for detail work or drag them flat on their sides for various shading techniques on larger areas. Their unique shape allows for the sticks to be broken for easier use. Select sets like landscape, portrait, and sketching. Single Conte crayon will cost you $3.66. A set of four basic sketching, sketching colors uh, for $3.00. 51 cents, which doesn't make sense to me that one of them is the price of a set of four. Uh, sets of 12 and 24 at 18 and 38 dollars and the full set of 48 at 60. So th this is one I sharpened for drawing effects. And look how it shows up beautifully. So I'm just using the point here to show you how it shows up on the paper and it doesn't feel like a soft pastel, a hard pastel I mean. It does resemble the feeling of a soft pastel, but it is not a, um, it's, it's not a soft pastel. Now I'm gonna break my red just so I can show you. Like you hear that on the wax, uh, I'm on the wax, on the, um, sanded paper like it's firmer it's it's a different type of drawing medium but it is something to have in your arsenal almost like it's oh it's as important to me as charcoal is so I wanted to show it to you and I'm pressing pretty hard to get this to cover so I love Conte crayons. I think they're great to have. I, I do a lot of my preliminary sketches on newsprint. Like look, this is um, this is newsprint right under here and look how it shows up perfectly. It's, it, it's just absolutely lovely. I, 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 I just, I love it. I could sketch with these for, for, for days and my, my camera is probably about to tell me it's um, a half hour and in a few seconds so if you uh, lose me I'll be right back just to say goodbye because that's all I got for you really. 
Okay, I just, um, I stopped recording before my camera did just to say goodbye to you guys. So those are the hard pastels. I hope you got a lot out of this as always. Um, one day I'll, if you want a video on sharpening these, like to a point, um, leave it in the comments below. Let me know and we'll go over sharpening them to a point in a safe way. The way that you sharpen them, you cannot get hurt. If you like this video and you like the series, please subscribe to my channel, share it with other people, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. Um, I, I'm really enjoying doing this for you and uh, I'm, I, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm enjoying sharing it. I love supplies and I, I love doing reviews, so this is just my jam. Um, next, we have paper and boards. So that's going to be really exciting i haven't decided if we're going to do it up on the easel or down here so i can zoom in so you could really see the textures of the paper and i had recently gotten my hands on a pack of hannah mule ingress um this is a very affordable very like like kind of flimsy type of paper that's meant for um like studies and stuff but it has a weird texture like this Canton Me Tints has a honeycomb texture. The Ingress has a linear texture. So we're gonna check that out and we're gonna go through all of the papers. Velour, Art Spectrum, Art Spectrum Smooth, Pastel Premier, uh, you know, um, different grits of UART. We're probably gonna do a whole video on UART itself at some point because I did contact UART and they were nice enough to send me some stuff. So we're gonna go over those things. We're gonna go over the difference between paper and boards and uh, why you would want your pastel paper boarded and all that wonderful, great, delicious information to help you on your pastel journey. So I hope you enjoyed this as always, and I will see you guys soon. Ciao for now.